folders, tags, or links. 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 When you first start using Obsidian, organizing is easy. You just create some notes and let your future self deal with your problems just like in real life. But if you're migrating from another program or you're starting to get hundreds of notes in your vault, you simply will have to start organizing your vault in some way. And when this happens, you can run into the classic folders, tags, and links dilemma. Now I'm here to finally solve this issue. I have found for me the most effective, easy to understand and interesting way to organize my notes is through maps of content, mocks. In this video, I will explain what a mock is, the five levels of mock emergence, how you can create them with a whole bunch of notes already in your system because you're migrating from somewhere else or over time, slowly as you create notes, and how you can assimilate them into a home note, which will serve as your navigational homepage. Before we start the video, I wanna preface that this is my own process for organizing things in my vault. Make sure this type of organization works for you before you do it. And in addition, don't discount the power of folders or tags. I use both of them extensively in my system, which I will make a video about on some point. Finally, the original term mock isn't actually mine. It came from a fantastic Obsidian community member, Nick Milo, who is also a YouTube channel that I have linked in the description down below. So what is a map of content or mock? A map of content is a summation of a bunch of other related notes. It's quite literally just a normal note in your Obsidian vault that links out to a bunch of other notes. You can link out in paragraph form, as a bullet list, through numbers, whatever floats your boat. They can serve as dashboards or overviews in your system and can also serve as hub spots for all your research on a given topic. So here's some example mocks in my system. I have my happiness mock, which is all of my notes related to happiness. So as you can see, I have them in a bullet list structure. So if happiness isn't a goal, then what is it? And then I have all of these things that happiness is that I've done research on. How can we better practice the activity of happiness? And then I have all these ideas on things that are related to that. These are all notes in themselves that are linked to other notes and other things. I have my personal knowledge management mock, just a bunch of notes in here related to personal knowledge management. And then I also have my encounter box, which serves as an, an overview of my encounters. These are the most recent notes from my encounters folder, which is a folder that collects all the notes that I create in my system. It automatically, when a note is created, puts it in the encounters folder. And this is a data view query that pulls all of the most recent notes in my encounters folder. Uh, right now it's a little bit broken. As you can see, it says days alive, six and 31. I will fix it. Uh, usually it would just have the most recent notes and I can go into here and flesh out notes that I've recently created and I'm still thinking about. So what are the benefits of mock creation? Well, mock organized systems reduce the need for folders and tags. Instead, you can use links as your primary organization feature. They also allow you to see the relationship between seemingly unrelated ideas. As notes connect, you assemble them together. And this only becomes more magical once mocks start linking to other mocks. And mocks allow you to think bottom up and top down. Adding a new note into your system, you can connect it to an atomic note that is connected on the bottom of one of your mocks, or you can connect it to the mock page itself. Mocks also allow you to do the thinking and linking first and the organization later once disorganization becomes overwhelming. This is particularly important because as personal knowledge management enthusiasts, it's very easy to do too much organizing to the point where you don't even create anything. And then mocks often don't use weird tags and folder structures. They should be pretty easy to understand by any observer, which might not be the case for other organizational methods. So there are generally two starting pots for mock creation. You already have the notes for your mock and now you're building it up. This could happen after you hit a mental squeeze point, which is when you notice so much notes in your vault that are not organized that you just have to create some form of organization. And another is if you're migrating from another system into Obsidian, already have a ton of notes you want to create mocks out of. So 
That's totally fine, but I would highly encourage you to ask if you really need to migrate all those notes from your old system into the new one. I used Rome Research for a year and a half before I moved to Obsidian, and I spent an entire week trying to figure out how to get my Rome Research notes to look good in Obsidian. It just drove me crazy. After I decided to just migrate, massive weight was lifted off my chest. The second starting point is if you have no notes and you're building the mock over time. This is actually the best situation because it gives you the time you really need to create good mocks. At this point, you're probably like, Edon, shut up and show us the mock creation process already. Okay, okay, Jesus. Don't expect me to say hi to you if we see each other in person though. I'm gonna take you through the five levels of mock emergence with my happiness mock as an example. The five levels were first put forth by Obsidian community member Nick Milo, who I mentioned earlier, but I find them so useful that I'm going to borrow them when I'm explaining this mock creation. Uh, the five step process is similar for both starting points of mock creation, except if you don't yet have the notes, it will take place over a longer period of time. So the first level is, is emergence level one. All mocks start out as singular notes and a singular note comes from the nothingness of fleeting thoughts. In this stage, my happiness mock wasn't even created yet. It was just a semblance of a couple of notes that resonated with me from conversation books and other information mediums. So you can see here, I have a whole bunch of different notes and these were all just floating in my system, just linked and not even necessarily linked to each other. They are linked right now, but they weren't originally. They were just notes in my system. So in the second emergence level, notes start to link to other notes. Relationships are formed. Pretty soon, these seemingly unrelated notes start to get linked together. So those three notes from before, all created from information I consumed on Stoicism and Buddhism related to happiness, got connected together. As you can see, your judgments of events hurt you, not the events themselves. Desire's distortion is linked down here. And then desire's distortion is also linked in my everlasting happiness comes from living a life in accordance with virtue right here. So they're starting to link together, as you can see. So emergence level three, there comes a point in the process where you want a bird's eye view of the relationships between the notes you're connecting, or you just wanna be a bird. Either is fine. You hit your mental squeeze point. This is when the mock creation process begins. There's a gathering, assembling, and incubating of information relevant to the mock. Usually this gathering will start out as a list of bi-directionally linked notes, but eventually you might turn this simple list into a paragraph structure. So this is my happiness mock during the beginning of Emergence Level 3, just a note with a whole bunch of different notes in it. As you can see, very roughly fleshed out, no organization whatsoever. But how did I find these notes? Well, I literally collected some notes that were very clearly related to happiness, like the pursuit of happiness for its own sake is foolhardy. Happiness, happiness, happiness. They all have the word happiness in them. It was very easy to find. But then what I did is I opened them up and I was like, okay, where are these notes linked to? This note is linked to loneliness as a cultural pathology. So if I wanted to, I could just drag this in. Oh, didn't want to do that. I could just drag this into my mock over here. Boom, now loneliness as a cultural pathology is linked there. And I can also see links in the graph view as well. Happiness is a sense of belonging. Well, let's see where that's linked to. Okay, happiness is a social phenomenon. Happiness mock. Happiness is a long-term activity of aligning values with action. Okay, well now I know more things that I can add is a social. I already have this up here. Happiness is a social phenomenon. I don't know why it does that card slash encounter slash sometimes. But point is, I found them through the local graph view and also the bi-directionally links view. And then over time, my happiness mock started to flesh itself out into what it is today. As you can see, I organized all those things I had into bullet lists, into little subsections, and I even have a little cute little Shakespeare quote at the top. At emergence level four, mocks start to get linked to other mocks. You're in the colliding phase of mock creation and linking your mocks this allows you to fly around your note library rapidly, organically getting unforced behavior-spaced repetition. You can see in my happiness mock how my mock links to other mocks that I have in my system, like I have my, I have my lifestyle design mock right here. Let's open that up. Yeah, so this entire mock is linked inside of 
my happiness mock because how can we better practice the activity of happiness? Well, we can start journaling so we can practice lifestyle design. What is lifestyle design? It's the art of crafting the best possible life for you and it requires you learn more about yourself and use this information to create the average perfect day for you as consistently as possible. So as you can see, this mock is now linked to a whole nother mock, which is linked to a whole bunch of other stuff. That This mock is linked to my gamification mock. So we are just going, Mock central, it's insane. Emergence level five. The highest level of emergence comes when you create a home note with all of your highest order notes. The home note is your beginning and your end, your launch pad and home base. Your home note allows for simultaneous top-down thinking by looking at your system from the home note or bottom-up thinking by creating atomic notes and adding them to mocks linked to your home note. So this is my home note, it has one of my favorite quotes, uh, as you can see, it's uh, by me. <laughs> I'm not a narcissist at all. What are you talking about? Uh, life is an infinite game. So this has all of my highest order mocks linked to it that provide not only overview or dashboard of my thinking, but also just a cooperation of my research. So as you can see, I have my encounter box from before. I have a boat box. I have an out box. I have my books mock, which just has all of my books that I've read inside of it. And I think it's important to mention here in all of my mocks, I have a up to my home note. And the reason I like to do that is it allows it, makes it very easy to get, oh, I didn't have it here, naughty Aiden. Makes it very easy to get back to my home note if I click on one of these mocks. Didn't have it here either. Man, I need to get up on my game. It has all my research interests, all of my college education classes that I'm taking at Cornell University, and also my motivation station, my 12 favorite questions, and my inspiration machine. So this is really helpful if I'm feeling down to just go in and be like, yeah, hype me up. Woo! So how do you create the home note? Well, it's literally the exact same process as creating a mock because your home note is a mock. It's a mock of other mocks. In fact, the bigger your system grows, the more this is gonna be the case. You're not just gonna have atomic notes and mocks, but rather atomic notes, lower level mocks, middle mocks, higher level mocks, mock mocks, peanut butter mocks, home note, or even more levels. <laughs> So how does this look on a grander scale? Well, here's my graph view. And while I don't normally like using the graph view for anything really except uh, the local graph view, I think this just provides a cool visualization of what this process will do over months and years once you create more mocks and compound your knowledge. So as you can see here, I have my graph view colored with my mocks are in red, my calendar, all my like journal entries are in orange, cards are basically my atomic, evergreen, permanent, every type of note other than the mocks and the calendar, and then green is all of my sources, so all of my like information that I've captured from various resources around the internet and linked as resources in my notes. So as you can see here, if I zoom in, you can see these red notes, these red little bulbs are my mocks. They are the big scopes of my system. There's my personal knowledge management mock. So isn't that so cool to just see where the biggest part of your knowledge base is coming from? That is the power of mock creation. Something profound happened to me when I started building mocks and home notes. I started waking up every day with the wonder and curiosity for what new notes and connections I would make. I'm building a unique interconnected body of knowledge, a culmination of my personal ideas and interpretations of my classes, own thoughts, conversations, and information consumption outside of school. In effect, my knowledge compounds, growing more and more useful the more notes I have rather than less. I have reignited my joy for learning. 
While I can't guarantee this note making process will work for you, I strongly encourage you to try it out for a few weeks at least. Be sure to check out my video going over my in-depth Zettelkast and note taking process inside of Obsidian. It discusses not only mocks, but my philosophy behind how I take notes inside of Obsidian. As always, have a fantastic rest of your day and bye bye